sometimes it just seems like the world is against us. We look to our left and the money we make a year is basically the same as last year. We look to our right and stuff like rent just keeps going up. Stuff like gas for your car just keeps going up. You know, basic things that you need to survive and get around with. I remember when I was 21, I was driving the same exact car I'm driving right now. And back then, I could fill up my car for $20, and that was when it was almost empty. I just filled it up the other day. It costed over $50. Inflation strikes again. Now, it would be a lot easier if our pay caught up with inflation, but most of the time it doesn't. And nine times out of 10, even when you do get that raise at work, it's only like 4%. And that's if you're doing good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's just on top of what you normally make. But lately, inflation has been over 6%. Last year, it was like 7%. So yeah, you're 3% short, even if you did get a raise that was like the average 4% that people get. That means if inflation went up 7% from year to year, and you got a raise and it was 4%. That means when it comes to your buying power, you're technically making less money than you made last year. But you gotta live, right? So you just take it to the chin and you pay for whatever it is you need despite however much it costs because you need it to live. You know that complaining will do absolutely nothing about it. You know this in the back of your head, but you know every now and then you find yourself expressing your displeasure with your family and friends. And a lot of times they share your frustration, like they understand, so next thing you know, y'all are all complaining together. All of you can relate to each other and they can especially relate to the fact that your pay hasn't changed in three years. All these frustrations get discussed in great detail, but you know what doesn't get discussed? How to fix it. We all have a chance to beat inflation, and some of us only have one chance to do it. And that chance starts with the decision, and it's not the easiest decision to make, but when you do it, it'll change your life for the better. You'll need a few things to help you make this decision. You'll need this or this. If you're old school, you'll need one of these and definitely one of these. And you can't forget about these. Like I said, it's an important decision. You don't actually need that last thing though, but you do need one of these. It's actually a pretty simple decision to make, but a lot of you are afraid to make this decision. So you're gonna have to unlearn some things. I had to do the same myself because I used to be terrified to make this decision that I'm talking about right now. That decision was entrusting myself with putting my money into anything other than a savings account. That decision was putting my money into a vehicle that could transform my money, grow my money, and also give me a consistent, nice return every single year. A return much greater than inflation, and a lot of times, it more than doubles inflation. We're talking an average of over 10% per year over the last 64 years. This is money you'll be making in your sleep passively and on top of that you'll get dividends you know money on top of money that's already making you money in the first place every time that money increases it'll gain interest on top of itself and multiply itself over the course of years it is literally the easiest money you will ever make in your life think about it this way the money you put in here is going to be on autopilot it's going to be growing regardless of what you're doing and it can pay you for the rest of your life so essentially what i'm telling you is once you set this up you'll be getting paid basically for doing nothing besides depositing some money into an account every month. What I'm not saying is you'll start today and become a millionaire tomorrow because that's definitely not going to happen. There's a process to everything in life and this is no different. This is definitely a gradual process. There are no shortcuts to this. Matter of fact, this is the shortcut. If you want to beat inflation even years after you've already retired and you want to become a millionaire over time, not overnight, keep watching this video because I'm about to give you the game. Just don't forget about me when you become a millionaire. That's all I ask. Step one, pull out your cell phone. This may be a little hard for you because you're probably already watching this video on your phone. In that case, just make a note of what I'm about to say. First, you're gonna want to go to the App Store or the Google Play Store for those of you who haven't wised up to having an iPhone yet, don't know what's wrong with y'all, and you wanna download one of these three apps, Robinhood, Weeble, or M1 Finance. There's more out there, but I like to use those three. Now, if you've been curious or interested about investing and making your money work for you, or if you've just so happened to come across one of my videos where I'm talking about investing, you, you probably already have one of these apps already. But for those of you who aren't quite there yet, go ahead and download one of them. By the way, shameless plug, if you use my links in the description to download these apps, you and I will both get free stocks. Only do it if you want to though. If you like free money, you probably want to do it. Once you've done that, I want you to go to the search bar as shown on the screen and type in VOO, VTI, and VGT. These three are my absolute favorites, and in my opinion, these are all you need. 
Reggie, what's a VGT? I am glad you asked. Those three things I just told you to search are not stocks. Rather, they are ETFs, also known as exchange traded funds. And what these are are basically buckets full of stocks, but not just any stocks, the best stocks in the world. Owning just one share of these is like owning part of Apple, Microsoft, Adobe, Google, Tesla, you get the idea. I've only ever owned two of these at a time. Like personally, I use BOO and BTI, and it's really cool because they can actually kind of counterbalance each other. So if one is going down and the other one's going up, it still balances out your portfolio. And that just means they grow at slightly different rates. So for example, BOO and VTI, they kind of have like a slower, more steady growth, whereas VGT is more up and down, like it's more volatile, but you get more growth out of it in the long run. Right now, all three of them are at a pretty good price at the time of me recording this video. And for any of you wondering, the only reason I haven't gotten into VGT was because at the time when I got into VOO and then later VTI, VGT was up here i thought it was too expensive to get into so i just want i like to wait for them to get to a decent price before i go into them but that's another story for another day now before i jump into these three i want to get back to the original point of the video for most people this is your only chance against inflation your average person isn't going to want to study stocks all day learn how crypto works or any of that stuff so this is a thoughtless way of investing while maximizing your return. You could literally just have one of these and outperform someone who's been investing in individual stocks for years. That's it, buying ETFs. That is your chance to beat inflation. And it's also the easiest way to beat inflation. This can be very passive for you because the strategy behind this is to simply buy and then hold on to these ETFs. And the way you do it is simple. You pull it up on the app, make sure the money's there, and then you just hit the buy button. Boom, you're done. If you buy the same amount every month, your money is going to grow inevitably. And then the more you add on to it, the better it's going to be. Let's say you have $500 every month that you have specifically for investing, right? And let's say VOO costs $402. Well, you buy one share of VOO every single month and you just have $100 left over that stays in your investment account. And then let's say next month is $420. Well, the money you have left over, you can still afford to have one VOO. So what I'm saying is whether the ETF goes up or down in price every month, you still buy the same amount every month or every three months, however often you're able to do it. This method is called dollar cost averaging. And even with dollar cost averaging, whether it's at a low or at a high price, what you're doing is you're getting more shares as you do it. And the amount of shares you have is gonna determine the growth over the long term. So if you just have like one share, and let's say it goes up 100%, okay, you doubled your money, that's great, but you only doubled like 400 bucks. Whereas let's say you had 20 shares and it went to 100%, now we're talking about some money. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, the, the return of these ETFs that I've personally picked out for this video specifically will give you way over that 6% inflation or whatever the inflation is right now. It's probably over 6%. But nah, now these give you in the double digits year over year. My philosophy is this. I'm like, well, you know, inflation isn't like going to stop. Like it's been a thing for a very long time, right? So I might as well go ahead and put my money somewhere where I know I'm going to get a return year after year after year. That money, as long as I'm putting it in the right place, it's going to outpace inflation. So I might as well just hold on to it and let it grow and grow and grow and multiply itself. And at the time, I chose the two cheapest ones, VOO and VTI. Now, right now, VGT is a little cheaper than VOO. So you might want to get into that one, but I just wanted to choose the two cheapest ones at the time so I could get more shares of both of them. So now let me break them down one by one so you can make sense of some of that gibberish. VOO, also known as VU, is Vanguard's S&P 500 fund. Think of the top 500 companies in the US and that's what you get. And of those companies, the best of the best are at the top. And so what that means is companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft hold more weight than the other companies do. So in this case, let's look up this ETF VOO. So we can look at which companies they hold and how much weight they have. I think it's best to think of ETFs as a big, giant pie. And each company represents a different flavor. And the best flavors take up bigger percentages of that pie. That's actually a really good analogy. I'm, I'm gonna go with that. Anyway, check it out. So what I'm looking at right now is VOO, as you can see up here, VOO in the blue, and then Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. So this right here, this website just shows the top 15, but if you subscribe to them, it'll show you all 508 holdings. How do I know there's 508 holdings? It says it right here on the screen. 508 so it's called the s p 500 fund but there's really 508 just fyi anyway if we look up here 
as we can see here, Apple is at the top and Apple is an absolute beast. So of that pie, Apple is the best flavor. You get what I'm saying? No pun intended. 6.92% is what it takes up. And that's a large percentage of the entire ETF that has 500 and something companies. As you can see, even of the top 15, the one at the bottom, Home Depot, doesn't even take a full percent. So if that puts it into perspective for you. Anyway, companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla, NVIDIA, love NVIDIA. So this is what I'm talking about. This is how they look at this. They say, you know what? The best companies are going to take up the bigger percentages. So now that I broke it down for you and you can kind of see the companies within it, I'm going to break down how the performance is just so you get an idea of how this can help you beat inflation. By the way, what I'm using to see what companies are within an ETF is this website called ETFDB, which stands for ETF Database. So if you are curious about ETFs, you can definitely check out that website and look at what companies are within it so you can make the best choice for you. Anyway, we're going to shift through this in Google just so you can kind of see. Uh, so here's the average annual return. Very, very, very important. A year, 14.95%. Three years, 18.28%. That's the market return. Five year, 15.39%. So as you can see, like this is average, of course. So sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's higher, but these are good. These are more than double that 7% that I was telling you about with the inflation earlier. All right, so now I'm going to go in the search bar, type VTI. And by the way, VTI is $220 right now at the time of this recording. We're going to go over to holdings. Boom. And as you can see, it's very similar. Like their top companies, are, I mean, they're not exactly the same, but they're very, very similar to that of VOOs, except you'll notice that like the weights are different. So instead of 6.92% for Apple, they have 5.81% over here for uh for vti anyway i know these look very similar and some people ask the question sometimes well why would i get voo and vti if they're basically the same thing they are not the same thing um they they weigh differently first of all and they have a completely different amount of companies within them so voo has 508 companies inside of it vti i'm gonna show you real quick actually i'm gonna show you pull it up right now keep scrolling they have 4033 companies within it so if that puts it into perspective for you, they're completely different. So uh, the biggest difference between v VOO and VTI is the fact that VOO purely deals with large cap companies. VTI deals with small, mid, and large cap companies. That is the biggest difference between the two. And so the annual average return of VTI for one year is 11.05%, three years, 17.44%, five year, 14.67%, 10 year, 13.59%. That is as of 331 2022 these returns are undeniable lastly and most volatile is vgt this is vanguard's information technology etf which as the name suggests it holds a bunch of tech stocks and as you can see as you look around the world right now things like the semiconductor industry the tech industry computers all that stuff they're all intertwined into one so as we can see tech is moving the world and don't get me wrong, I say it's volatile, but it's still a pretty smooth ETF. It grows pretty steadily. It's just more volatile than the other ones that I just named. And that just means it might be a little more risky than the other ones. So it has more potential to grow, but also when it falls, it falls. See, with VOO and VTI, at least you know you're getting a bunch of different companies and they go across every single sector. If you don't know what all the market sectors are, I can't remember them off the top of my head. I'm going to put them on the screen right now. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and go over them. So you have energies, materials, industrials, utilities, healthcare, financials, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, information technology, communication services, and real estate. So VOO and VTI, they have all of that. See, VGT is pure tech. And as you can see, they just weigh these way differently. So Apple, 22%, Microsoft, 17%, NVIDIA, 5%. And I think it's insanely smart they put NVIDIA in the top three because that stock goes crazy. So the top two are the same, Apple and Microsoft for absolute B. So you're going to see them at the top of a bunch of really good ETFs. But below, everything goes different. So like NVIDIA was like ranked number five or six in the other ones. But here we go, it's number three. And I think it's a good spot for NVIDIA. You have NVIDIA, you have Visa, MasterCard, 
I mean, Cisco, Adobe, Salesforce, AMD, Intuit. I mean, these are these are really really good good companies. So those are the top 15. And of the total holdings, there's 361 holdings. So that's another reason why you'll see different weights or different percentages of this pie that we call an ETF. And before and before I go off on my tangent, I'm gonna show you the average annual return for VGT. One year, 16.74%. Three years, 28.4%. Five years, 26.07%. 10 years, 19.81%. What else is there to say? These are, they're nasty. I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, if if you want your pockets to be looking good some years from now, I'm telling you, these are the way to go. And to be honest, there's some people that retire with just one of these. Like there's people who retire with just VOO in their Roth IRA, just VTI in their Roth IRA, or just VGT. And if you want and if you feel like you want a little more security, you could pair one with the other. You could do VOO and VGT, VOO, VTI. They're all interchangeable. It really doesn't matter how you pair them. I think you can't really go wrong with any of the three. That's why I listed those as my top three ETFs for this video. I just gave you the game. Now, these are kind of on the expensive side, so you're definitely not going to be able to buy truckloads of them at a time. And don't feel like you have to do it every month just to see some good results. Like... Even if it's every other month, every three months, every four months, every six months, try to do so consistently. That way you'll see really, really, really big growth in the future. And that's whether you want to get started with just one of these, two of these that you want to pair together, or even if you want to just buy all three of them and just see what they do. I mean, I don't really think you can go wrong with either one of those. Just know there will be ups and downs when you decide to get into these. And that is just the nature of the beast that we call the stock market. And again, as, as long as you hold on to these ETFs, I'm telling you, your, your, your portfolio will outperform that of most people who are individually investing in stocks. Most of them. I will say this. When you do invest in funds like these, make sure the money you invest with is money that you absolutely don't need. Because you, the idea is you don't touch this money for nothing. Like you don't want to move it at all. You let it sit. You let it sit. You let it grow. You don't touch it. So if that requires you to save up some more money to feel comfortable to do that, then that's that's what it's got to be. But there's a lot of folks who lose money in the stock market because they, they invest with money that they can't afford to lose, that they absolutely need, and then they end up taking it out and borrowing it. And now they just missed out on growth they could have been getting this whole time. So yeah, the strategy I gave you in this video is very, very simple, but it is a very powerful one that can help you build a hedge against inflation. That's what I recommend. Those three ETFs are fantastic. And if you invest in them consistently over the course of years, you'll be a very, very happy person. Just make sure you invest responsibly. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.